as you know, the historical events of the destruction of Dresden very rapidly became highly symbolic. That means for the last three months of the war, the Nazi propaganda used it very intensely, and they, they tried to produce um, a propaganda narration which was rapidly linked to the historical events. And at the end of the war, that means three months after the uh, bombing of Dresden, um, Dresden already was a symbolic place. It means a symbol for the air war against Germany, but in a, in a wider sense a symbol for the civilian losses in the war and for the losses of cultural goods in the war. And one year later, in 1946, a, a Dresden photograph did um, a huge series of photographs from the destructed city. And again, two years later, in 1949, three years later, in 1949, with the start of the East German propaganda using the symbol of Dresden very intensely. I will tell you about all this tomorrow, much more um, in, in much more detail. So this is some kind of preview now. <laughs> um, Yes, in 1949 they started this huge propaganda campaign with the destruction of Dresden, which was directed against the West. A massive accusation against uh, the Western imperialists, as they were called in this time. And one, one of the first things they did was to produce this book in 1949. It's, a, it's an original copy. Um, the title says, in German, and a camera klagt an. A camera accuses. Is it, is it right in English? Yeah. A, a camera accuses. And it was done by this uh, mentioned Dresden photograph. His name is Richard Peter. He belongs to the working class of photography tradition in the pre war time. And during the time of the destruction, he wasn't in Dresden, but he, um, after the end of the war, he came back to his destructed hometown and started to do these photographs. Um, I will tell you tomorrow how this highly symbolic narration, which is linked to the trace events, was constructed and what is the contents of this narration. And there, there's one important topic. Um, the first thing they did immediately in, in the first days of the destruction of Trace was to claim that this was an innocent city, a city far away from the war with nothing of military value with no armament production, no military installations, nothing like this. So um, they used this as a background to say what the Allies did with Dresden um, must have been. But this is true, a big crime. And the East German communists in, in 1949 continued to use this story and to use the symbol in much the same way as the Nazi propaganda did um, for years before. And so, all this you can see in this book, if you um, start to, to see the first pages, it starts with some beautiful pre-war images of the city, all taken by night. <coughs> Situation of um, the quiet city without people, a fairy tale place. It's not. It's beyond imagine to, to think that there's something evil or bad, or military or armament or something like this. It's such a surrounding. It's like far away from reality. That means this is the tale of the innocent city, and then suddenly um, the photographer decided to have a first break in the book, and here you can see maybe the most uh, symbolic view of the undestructed city, this river front with all the buildings. And this is confronted with a view from here. And this photograph was taken right behind me. There's a statue symbolizing grace. And this statue um, yes, shows this movement. It shows the destructed city with, with a gesture of accusation, of course. And Behind the statue, you can you can see these um, huge landscape landscape of destruction without anything left intact. And this, of course, is not propaganda; it was so. But um, this photo became quickly very, very successful, 
and today it's known all over the world. And I, um, I decided to, to show you this place and this uh, photograph because the story of the photograph itself is typical for what happened with the trace the story in a more general sense. Yeah? That means the historical event became highly symbolic and today, or not only today, during all the last decades, it was used for a lot of purposes and a lot of discourses um, and a lot of them not necessarily linked to the historical events. That means there's some universal meaning in the Tracen story and in this picture okay, that became one of the photographic icons of the 20th century. Highly recognizable and, and very strange um, connections to, to things, not any longer connected to Tracen. And so it is with the Tracen story, you can use it for whatever you like because um, it's, it's so symbolic and it's so um, such a wide space open for any interpretation, for any detail, but I will tell you more about this tomorrow. So if you like, you can see the original place, you can imagine how difficult it must have been to take this photograph because the tower was burned out, it was um, a very adventurous man climbing up to here, and then in his report he describes how he brought uh, some some wooden installations up to to this platform to to be high enough to to do the photograph. But you can't do it from this level, so um, <coughs> very adventurous. And uh, before before you can can see the original spot, I would like to show you some later photos with the from the same place. This is a book we we did um, three years ago, a summary of. Uh, 20 years of research, and in the middle of this book there's a photographic essay. That means the story of Trace is not only told in, in uh, historical documents and uh, historical narration, but also in photos. And yeah, there's a, a part of this telling the story of this picture. And as you can see, it starts with a reproduction of the book, and then an illustration that um, this view, this, this image, um, became very popular, very important for other photographs during all the decades up to today.